Why is this teaching of the Catholic Trinity so important to Satan and those that follow him? You know, I got to thinking about that and I thought, you know, at first I thought, well, it's just kind of a little debate back and forth, you know, is, is God, you know, three different separate beings in heaven or is God just one, you know, the body of Jesus Christ, the soul is God, the spirit is the Holy Ghost. You know, what's going on there? And I just thought, well, you know, it's a mystery of godliness. We can't really know for sure. And I, I didn't think it was this kind of a thing where I should be, you know, people are now saying I'm a heretic and I'm lost and I'm modalist and all this other stuff. And I've covered that in the other study, why I'm not a modalist. So watch that. But it's just like, I'm going, I'm thinking to myself, it's just like you do one of these studies and it's kind of like the Holy Spirit starts to just kind of reveal a little bit to you. And it's like, you get that feeling there's something a lot deeper going on here. Lord showed me what it's all about. Turn in your Bible to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verses 3 through 9. It says here, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, to a Roman Catholic, how could this man show himself that he is God? What is their perception of God? They perceive God as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So I believe, and I'm going to prove it to you in this study, that the Antichrist, when he shows up, there's going to be three beings. I'll say that. Three persons, individual people there to symbolize the Catholic Trinity. I'm going to show you the proof. But uh, so isn't, is it, it isn't that you know, the Antichrist just shows up and he's claiming to be Jesus Christ or whatever else. Oh, no. It's God that he's claiming to be. God the Father, in other words. And I'm going to show you the proof that they're going to pull off this thing of the satanic trinity there as a counterfeit for the true trinity up in heaven, which is not three, it's just one. Uh, with, well, watch the other study. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Okay, here's again another big proof for the Catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. What is withholding? What is keeping back the Antichrist from showing up? Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Catholicism has been around, the mystery of iniquity. Okay, that's the system of the Antichrist that's going to be coming. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. What's going on there? Again, I've talked about this in many studies. The he who now letteth... The hindering there is the work of the Holy Spirit until He, the body of Christ, is taken out of the way. See, people say, well, it can't be the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit can't be taken out of the way because He's omnipresent. That's very true. And there will certainly be saved people in that time of Jacob's trouble. They'll realize what happened when the rapture hits and they're going to get saved. You know, well, how can they get saved without saints being on the earth? Um, I don't know, uh, the Lord, you know, Moses and Elijah being sent back to preach. You know, God's got his ways. Okay. <laughs> People are nuts. But the true interpretation of this passage is, He who now letteth will let. The Holy Spirit is hindering the Antichrist from showing up. Uh, as far as coming out onto the scene, the mystery of iniquity is already there. That system is already there. But the Holy Spirit's hindering, letting, okay, is, the, is your King James Bible word there, until he be taken out of the way, the body of Christ. Again, proven over and over again. Go to Revelation chapter 5. Before the Antichrist is revealed in chapter 6, there are 24 elders and a great multitude of angels in heaven. And the 24 elders, you can say what you want about angels and things, and I've proved it in studies that that's redeemed saints. But, you know, that's a whole other thing. But the fact is the 24 elders, you can't get around that. All right? They're out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation. They're not 12 Jewish disciples and 12 patriarchs of Israel or whatever. No, they're not. No, they're not. Somebody tells you that, they're lying to you. Okay, God has set the bounds of the habitation of all the different nations. There's 12 natural boundaries. And my belief is, very simply, that there's two saved saints out of each one of the 12 
boundaries that God has set. Again, I've proved that in other studies. But look at verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's going to be important later. There's two there. Gets destroyed with the, consumed with the spirit of his mouth, and destroyed with the brightness of his coming. Remember that for later. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. All right. This Antichrist that's coming is going to be getting his power from Satan. I'm going to show you proof of that too. It's going to be fun. Revelation chapter 13. Go over to Revelation th chapter 13. I'm going to show you who the Satanic Trinity is. Remember, do a study of this whole thing. God's characteristics and the devil's counterfeits of those characteristics. Everything that God is, everything that God does, Satan always counterfeits it. Remember that. Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Notice the two sets of threes there. Okay, Leopard, bear, lion. First set of threes. Dragon gave him his power, seat, great authority. That will be important later as we continue. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? How many beings are being worshipped there? Two. Where's the third one coming at? Go over to uh, verse 11 in the same chapter. Revelation 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a dragon, or excuse me, like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Hmm. Interesting. So you have three beings mentioned here. Three persons, unique persons, separate from each other. The dragon, the beast, the false prophet. Hmm. You say, well, you know, okay, the false prophet and the, and the beast, I could see the two of them. I don't know about this dragon thing, that Satan actually physically reigning. Oh, yeah. Let me show you the proof. Revelation 16. I'm going to show you. Revelation chapter 16, verses 10 through 11. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Dragon gave him his seat. Okay? It's poured out on the seat of the beast. Are they all three ruling there? Keep reading. Upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, his, and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their swords and repented not of their deeds. Hmm. So this vial of God's wrath is poured out upon the seat, the authority of the beast kingdom, and they feel the pain of it. There's three of them ruling as a trinity. I still don't believe you. I, oh, come on. You're stretching things. Of course I am to some of the people out there. Revelation 13, verse, uh, Revelation, excuse me, chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. There's so many points I want to get out. I'm like, I gotta, I'm kind of <laughs> like really rushing to get this out because it's some amazing stuff. Revelation chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Hmm. The three are reigning together. Interesting. Revelation chapter 19. The 
The spirits of devils come out of their mouth, like the spirits of, like, they look like frogs, essentially. Kind of weird, but they come out of the three that are ruling there from the seat of the beast. Comes out to do what? To prepare them for the battle of Armageddon. When you study the thing out. Okay. Verse 19. Revelation chapter 19, verse 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. What did we read over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2? Keep your finger there in Revelation 19. Go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. What does it say here? The remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. You see the tie-in? It's right there. But notice in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, <clears throat> whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, there's one, and, uh, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. There's two. What happens to the dragon? The beast and the false prophet are taken. What happens to the dragon? Verse 20, or chapter 20, excuse me, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. Because the people at the end of the millennial kingdom are going to forget what it was like way back when, so the Lord's going to allow the devil to go out and deceive him again, and that time he finally wipes him out. But look at verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented night, day and night forever and ever. The satanic trinity is together forever. Hmm. Interesting. But now I'm going to show you an actual picture of a Catholic depiction of what they believe the Trinity looks like, the Holy Trinity of Roman Catholicism. It's basically going to be revealed on the earth, I believe, before real long. Because we don't know what Jesus Christ looked like. Uh, certainly not. And I said a long time ago, I said, what if all these Catholic artists down through the centuries have been painting the Antichrist for when he comes? To basically get people ready for this Christ guy when he shows up. I think it goes even further. I think that they were painting the Satanic Trinity. Let me show it to you here. Notice a couple interesting things here about this Satanic Trinity. First of all, you have the young Christ with his hand making the bow symbol. All right? The beast, like this, comes with a bow in his hand. You see? He's making the symbol of the bow. So this young man in the picture there would be the beast. Then you have the old man symbolizing God the Father. And it's funny because he's older. He looks almost like a prophet. He's got the big white beard and the whole deal there and everything else. And there's probably a lot more I could get into on this whole thing, but I'm not going to for sake of time. But there you have the false prophet. And then you have a winged dove giving power. It looks like in the picture he's giving power to both. Those rays coming down, empowering both. Exactly what the devil is going to do with the beast and the false prophet. He's going to be giving them his power. Hmm. And yet the Bible calls him the dragon. Satan. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11 says that he can transform himself into an angel of light. What do many people think of as angels? Men with feathered wings. Could it be that the devil could show up and transform himself into a white dove? Speculation on my part. I freely admit to that. 
I can't show you a verse of scripture that says the devil's going to show up as a white dove. I can't say that. But what if he did? Or what if he just showed up as the angel of light? And he shows up. He's a cherub, anointed cherub. Uh, that's his position, you know, when he got kicked out of heaven. And I don't, you know, he can still apparently appear as that. He, you know, uh, can transform himself into an angel of light. What if you'd have this guy showing up and he's got feathered wings behind this Christ-looking guy and this older man, the prophet? Of course, he's not going to call, I'm, hello, I'm the false prophet, you know, and the other guy, I'm the Antichrist, you know. They're not going to say that. What are they going to say? That they're God? I mean, it's just so weird to me. I'm just going like, why is this thing becoming such a huge deal? And all these fakers out there are just like up in arms and they're just going ballistic about this whole thing. Why? Because I believe that uh, the Lord has revealed the identity of the Antichrist. Or at least, not, maybe not the identity, but I believe that the Lord has revealed what's going to happen. It's this false trinity notion of three gods up there. But they're all one God, mind you. Now, if you've seen my other study, the thing on uh, why I'm not a modalist, you understand this whole three separate God thing is heresy. It's nonsense. Hmm. But uh, if that's not enough for you, I'm going to give you one more thing to chew on. You ready? What is the Roman Catholic symbol that they use to explain away the, the, the well, to, for, to explain their trinity? Let me put it up here. I'll step to the side here. I'll stick it right there. Okay? Thing that uh, Robert Breaker drew. I don't know where I learned this from. I don't remember. It might have been Bible College or something. I don't remember. You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Downward pointing triangle. And yet you have witchcraft's trichetra symbol, the symbol of the, you know, witchcraft trinity, so to speak. And it's three interlocking sixes. There it is. Um, what happens if you put the two of those together? You would get a hexagram, the most evil symbol in witchcraft. What does the Bible say back in Daniel that uh, the Antichrist, by his hand, that craft is going to prosper? Witchcraft? Hmm. Interesting. And uh, what is the flag that flies the hexagram? the flag for Israel. Uh, what city has the Vatican taken? And they're going, they're calling it an international city, and they want to be able to have a seat there, a throne for the Pope in the future. Uh, Jerusalem, the city of the great king. That's Jesus' city. But the Antichrist is going to rule and reign from that temple that's rebuilt there. All lines up all of a sudden, doesn't it? Why is it so important for these Catholics to get through their pagan idea of the Trinity? This philosophical, Greek philosophical, pagan thing of three different gods, but they're one God. And they have divine essence that connects them, and they have this and that and all these other philosophical terms. Why is it so important? Because they've been planning for thousands of years for exactly what's going to be happening in the book of Revelation. That's what's going on. I mean, I'm going to be very straight with you. I stumbled into this thing completely innocent. I just looked and I said, you know, I do believe the Bible teaches that Jesus is God the Father. And all of a sudden everybody just goes wild, just ballistic. And they're attacking me and all kinds of stuff. And I'm going, okay, you know, what's this all about? Well, let me show you another verse. And then it got even worse. And I'm going, and you know, I'm just showing you some verses of Scripture. I don't know what the big deal is. It's a mystery of godliness. And... And everything, you know, quit attacking me. What in the world's going on? Now I understand why. Because the Lord has revealed now to me, uh, and hopefully to you after you've seen the evidence, that in the time of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be a satanic trinity sitting in that temple. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're already crossing themselves. They're already prepared.
something to think about, brethren. You know, what can we learn from this? What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is, as a Christian, you can't care what people think about you. They're going to call you a heretic. They're going to call you all kinds of names. And you just got to get to the point, brethren. It's, it's going to be hard at first. It's a little weird, you know, and people start attacking you, especially if you know, loved family members or friends start to turn against you. It's kind of like, this is a little weird, <laughs> you know. But you got to get to the point where you realize um, the Lord's system goes contrary to the world's system. You can't be a friend of the world. If you are, you're the enemy of God. But what a wonderful thing it is to be shown truth from the Word of God and to know not that I'm right and I'm just wonderful. No. The book's right. You rightly divide the Scriptures and all this stuff makes sense. You go, wow, it's right there. Let's stand by the book, brethren.